Hello, welcome to this tutorial video for the Desproto 3D CAM software. It's a sh short video only, meant to quickly introduce Desproto to you, so it will only give you a basic idea of how it works. All details will be skipped and can be seen in other instruction videos. Um, the video uh, applies both to the full and the light version. What you see here is the full version, but this video applies to both. Shown is Desproto version 5. Okay, as all um, programs, Desproto has a menu bar, a button bar, and before I show you uh, anything, it's best to first load a geometry, then I can quickly demonstrate what's happening. Okay, that's the first thing I have to explain. In the file menu, you can find an open function, but that function opens uh, existing Desproto projects. So when you want to start a new project, you do not start with the open command, you start with the load geometry command. When you do that, you get an open file window that gives you the option um, to load STL files, so to load geometry files. A shortcut is in the button, so I press button load geometry and I will load the STL file for the bottle, a uh, small perfume bottle, which is one of the examples installed with any Desproto setup. Okay, that's better. I now can uh, rotate the geometry. I can pan the geometry. You see here four buttons and always one of the four buttons will be active at a time. So now mouse in panning mode, zooming mode, uh, zoom window mode. So the area around the bottom of the of the cap is shown then. Previous view. We have a lot of main views obviously, but well that stuff will be roughly the same as in any 3D CAD program. So you get accustomed to that very quickly. Um, well, the same functions as present in the buttons are also present in the uh, view menu. Um, here we have the area where the uh, picture is, where the drawing is made. And here you also see this, these thumb wheels, which can be used to rotate exactly around a specific axis of the screen. Also to pan, to zoom, etc. If you don't want them, you can get rid of them by just unchecking the thumb wheels. But personally, I like them, so I'll keep them in touch. They're a sort of Desproto special uh, well uh, appearance on the screen. Here's the tree window, and here's the NC files window. As we haven't yet saved any NC files, it's still empty. OK, here's the tree. You can see it's called Untitled, as we haven't yet saved the project. When I save the project as, for instance, test, it will exist already, I'm afraid. So we get a warning, yes, replace. And now the project is called test, test. Uh, the DPG is Death Proto project file. OK, we want a machine. Oh, wrong mouse mode, zoom previous. We want to machine this geometry. First thing you need to realize is that the um, cutter comes from the positive Z direction. So the bottle is standing upright and it doesn't make really make sense to machine it in this way as the cutter will not be able to reach under the shoulders of the button for uh, of the bottle for instance i can quickly show that to you by just calculating toolpath we have a button here calculate toolpath and you see well this model it doesn't make sense it's not really a good model for the bottle the obvious way to machine this is to rotate the bottle 90 degrees over x so to lay it flat and uh, then machine half a bottle when you do that again, you have two halves, you can combine them, you have a prototype of the complete bottle. Okay, how do we enter those parameters? Those are obviously present in the parameter menu, menu the 90 degree rotation being one of the parameters. 
we have parameters on three levels. At project level, those are not so very interesting. I'll just skip those for now, but those two are interesting. The part parameters, they, uh, with the part parameters, you decide which geometry you want to machine. So the rotation will be there, scaling will be there, uh, mirroring or uh, partial uh, milling of the model. Any of these parameters will be present in the part parameters. And the operation parameters are the actual milling parameters. So which cutter you want to use, uh, which direction you want the cutter to move, which speed, etc, etc. Those same same three levels are visible in the tree in the tree window you have one project one project can contain one or more parts for instance when you want to machine a model of a hand tool a hand drilling machine for instance you will machine two separate parts left side of the machine and right side of the machine and combine them and then also in your project you need two different parts with each a different rotation, so a different orientation of the geometry. And in one part, then you can have one or more operations, for instance, one operation for roughing, one operation for finishing, and if needed, a third one uh, to add some details uh, to your project. Okay, as said, we want to start with rotating the geometry in order to correctly orientated on the machine. That's one of the part parameters. I can call them in the menu, but normally I just double click the line in the tree. Here are my part parameters. Um, here you should recognize your machine. That's Proto has a large, large list of machines available and after installing the software, the first thing Desproto will ask you is which machine you want to use. So in your case, the correct machine will be already present there. The rotation is one of the transformations offered by Desproto. Here is a rotation. I want to have it 90 or rather minus 90 degrees around the x-axis. Here you can see. And when I now press OK, you see that the bottle is orientated correctly. Still, it's not what I want because I only want to machine the top half. Here also you see something different. You see all gray lines here. That's Desproto recognizes that this block is too high for the cutter that has been selected as a default cutter. We haven't chosen any cutter, but Desperado has a default cutter. That's a six millimeter bull nose cutter that can cut 25 millimeters deep and not more. So Desperado will refuse the cutter to go deeper than 25 millimeters than it machines the first layer. When that's ready, when that's done, it starts with the second layer. It starts machining. It says, hey, I've been here already. I can go up, travel in a rapid mode over the geometry, again go down for the second layer. It's As you can see, it's all done fully automatically. And if I need, if I need, <coughs> sorry, if needed, I can override these settings for different layer height, etc., etc. But in this example, we don't need it. I go back to my part parameters, double click. Um, I go to the segment. The segment is the green area, the block of material needed for machining. And I just have this pre, uh, well, well this, this available option, upper half of geometry. When I now say, okay, here are my toolpath for just half a bottle. And when I double click on the operation parameters, I can fine tune. Normally I do that before calculating any toolpath, uh, of course, but here for the instruction video, I started with calculating toolpath. I can select a different cutter. I can select a different distance between the toolpath. For instance, when I want to have a smoother model, I can say it on two tenths of a millimeter per toolpath and also the step size along the toolpath. Each toolpath, which is in fact a curve, consists of many small straight line segments. So also the step size along is important. Normally I set both to be equal. It calculates again and now it's very red because I have a lot of toolpath here. You can see what happens. Here are the toolpaths for my geometry. Okay, 
I'm happy with the tool path. I want to send them to the machine. And then the last step to do is in the last step 